uh, for additional participants to join. Molecular Devices webinar on Super Resolution. My name is Maro Chatterday, and I am the distribution manager for Metamorph. Uh, we're going to have a, uh, a transatlantic uh, conference uh, today. Our guest speaker is uh, Dr. Jean Baptiste Sibarita from France. So, if there are any glitches, I apologize in advance. We'll try to clear it up uh, as soon as possible. Our uh, webinar is Metamorph Super Resolution System. For Palm, Storm, and D Storm. For today, is first of all, I will introduce uh, the Metamorph Super Resolution System briefly. Said I'm the distribution manager for Metamorph software at Molecular Devices. Our guest speaker today is uh, Jean-Baptiste Sibarita. The uh, title of his talk will be Resolving Molecular Organization and Dynamics Using Localization-Based Super-Resolution Microscopy. The uh, Metamorph Super-Resolution System was introduced months ago at the Society for Neuroscience meeting in uh, San Francisco. Today's webinar is reporting on research using such a super-resolution system. A few additional remarks are in order. As I said, we are uh, uh, having a meeting with uh, the Atlantic Connection with France, and our host, uh, guest speaker will be uh, talking uh, from uh, his offices in Bordeaux. The uh, webinar, you can submit questions at any time. You press on the Q&A button on the toolbar to expand the Q&A window. And then type your question into the space pilot. And then all panelists. Then your question will be seen by the panelists uh, of today's meeting. And once you've chosen panelists, then press the send button. If you need any help, Webex technical support is available at the phone number provided or a note uh, to the host. The questions and answers after the talk. Before our guest speaker, let me offer a few remarks on super resolution. Over the many years being involved with microscope-related research, the basic tenet of light microscopy has always been the discovery of Ernst Abbe that spatial resolution is diffraction limited to a value of about 250 nanometers. Today's talk on super resolution concerns ways of bypassing this limitation and methods of achieving an approximately 10 times better result while still using light microscopy. Methods such as storm, palm, and D storm, or Brecht storm, genius and deceptively simple conceptually. The single slide I am showing you of the Metamorph Super Resolution System in operation, you can see a partial movie of experiment. In the left-hand corner is a different limited image of Alexa 647 labeled tubulin. The solution of fine detail is finite. No magnification offers any improvement. The sinus fluorescence from adjacent fluorophores overlaps. Individual molecules are indistinguishable. The only really simple idea to overcome this limitation is illustrated in the second window. Through cloud physical manipulation using photoactivation or photoconversion or internal conversion, a very limited number of molecules are allowed to fluoresce, while the rest is inhibited from doing so. You'll see the visual punctate uh, since, uh, footprints. 20 to 100 single molecules out of millions. These are not adjacent to 
to each other due to the probabilistic nature of their activation. The point that they should be separated enough so that their localization can be achieved. This is the uh, localization uh, result. Individual punctate uh, uh, coordinates are being uh, displayed. Expose an image in every seconds and repeating the activation cycle many thousands of times. A stack of images is obtained in every frame of which the individually fluorescing molecules are localized with great precision. And it's a very limited data set that I am uh, looping through here. Now see how the coordinate map is being built as the uh, individual uh, frames are exposed. Now it's you to hear about this trade-off of time maps for spatial resolution from an accomplished practitioner of the art, Dr. Jean-Baptiste Sibarita. Jean Sibarita is head of the R&D team for quantitative cell imaging at the Functional Genomics Department of the University of Bordeaux under the auspices of the French National Center for Scientific Research, CNRS. He obtained a PhD degree in physics in 1996 at Joseph Fourier University in Grenoble before recruited to the CNRS as a research engineer in 1997. He was co-director for 12 years of the imaging center that he launched at the Curie Institute in Paris. The next live microscopy and image analysis and processing, he has created several industrial partnerships during the past 10 years. Jean Sibarita's R&D team is currently involved in developing novel instruments for high-resolution microscopy of living samples, focusing on single molecule tracking by photoactivation localization microscopy, local phototurbation microscopy, and multiple imaging and structured illumination microscopy. Super-resolution technology that molecular devices is licensing from CNRS is the latest of his achievements. It is with good pleasure that I invite Dr. Sibarita to speak about the resolving molecular organization and dynamics using localization-based super-resolution microscopy. I will now pass the control over to Jean-Baptiste. Thank you very much, Caroline. So um, I hope everybody hear me. So first, I'd like to thank very much Carrie for uh, this very kind um, introduction, and um, I will talk. So just start before. Okay. So I present you some of the latest uh, development that we have done in my team uh, at, inside the Interdisciplinary Institute for Neuroscience in Bordeaux, dealing with super-resolution microscopy and more speci uh, specifically uh, dealing with localization-based super-resolution microscopy. So my talk will be divided in three main parts. In the first part, I will basically reintroduce the concept and how, thanks to localization of single molecule, we can overcome by a factor of almost 10 the, um, the rate of resolution due to, uh, to diffraction. In the second talk, I will go more into some technical implementation that we have done, which I lead to this uh, technology transfer with uh, metamorph and show, try to present to you how we have overcome some uh, of the limits due to some heaviness of the technique due to the time-consuming uh, resource which is requiring for this localization technique, and how we have uh, developed, uh, how we have handled with a uh, software which uh, allows to make resolution in real time. In the third part of my talk, I will end with a nice bar application that we have performed in uh, collaboration with the group of Daniel Schoke, showing how, thanks to this super-resolution technique, we have unraveled some new organization within uh, of the um, uh, polynaptic molecule within neurons in live and fixed samples. Okay, so I will just start some, uh, with the very beginning. So as you all know, of course, that light microscopy is limited in resolution. So this is due to the diffraction effect. And it, it has the, the following consequence, that if you look to a point through your microscope, so what we'll see is this 
diffraction pattern, which are known as a hairy disk. So this diffraction pattern limits the resolution, so that's the, the consequence, and it has big, because of its physical size. And the size of the diffraction pattern is directly linked to the wavelength, um, to the emission wavelengths, and numerical, of, uh, numerical aperture of your microscope. And basically, for the best objective, you will be able to achieve a both at the wavelength, which is in the range of 200 to 300 nanometer in the visible range uh, thing. The resolution then from this shows that if you have molecules which are close together, then down to a certain distance, you will not be able to resolve them. Starting from a distance called the resolution that you would be able to resolve the two structure together. This nanometer uh, resolution uh, is a big problem in biology since you know that most of the interesting uh, uh, organization is between 10 nanometer to 200 nanometer. It's that most of everything at, uh, 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 below this 200 nanometer, you will not be able to resolve them. So, this, let's say, 10 years, there is very major in the field of uh, light microscopy, and it's called super resolution microscopy. So this limit, which has been uh, uh, straightened more than a century ago, has been on. And there are three bases of, uh, of technique which reach to uh, overcome this technique. So one has been developed in the 19s by, uh, by the group of uh, Stenel. It's called uh, the SED. Then in the uh, in the two uh, on the 2000 roughly, so the the group of uh, Mike Gustafsson so developed what's called structural illumination microscopy. Finally, a bit later, like maybe 2006, just came the group of Bedig and the group of Wang just uh, published the first paper on localization uh, microscopy. So this is the technique I will uh, mostly focus my uh, my work on. So this is a technique based on localization of individual fluorophore. So all this uh, technique works. So this, compared to the two other techniques, which are deterministic te uh, method, means that you need to control exactly when you want your fuel for, so in the main space, to, uh, uh, the, um, the state of your fluor, fluor for, whether you want to have your fluor for in frozen state or non frozen state. What in the static method, so the single molecule so that's completely uh, um, uh, directed by the stochasticity of the um, of the process. So for the of uh, of technique, before I go into the, the detail on how it works, and so you will hear about palm, you hear about storm, darm, jidim, and also the paint technique. So all rely on different photophysical properties of your fluor four. But at the end, the the, the, the the principle is the same, is to localize a large number of individual molecules. No matter if it's a genetically encoded uh, frozen protein or organic fluorophore. So about the, 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 the principle, so you remember that if you look at one individual uh, source, so it will appear through a microscope as this diffraction pattern, which is mostly like an ocean shape with some out of, uh, other rings here, which are much, much dimmer. If you look at more than molecules, so depending on how far or distant they are uh, from uh, each other, then you will or not be able to resolve them. And of course, if you have a density of molecules, uh, which, is, uh, which is too high, then you will not be able to resolve anything because of these uh, limits. So the goal of this location-based technique is to look the molecules one after the other one, no, uh, one by one, one after the, the other. So typically, you start with, by uh, looking at one molecule, then localize it because you have a single molecule and then you, you know the profile and you are capable to localize this molecule. Um, an accuracy that will come back to this later, which is much better accuracy uh, than the resolution itself, depending on the number of photons. And then you go, you localize it, then you switch another molecule, localize it, and so on. And then you repeat the process many, many times as many as you as you have molecules, more or less. And you end 
with the capability to restrict DJ with a much, much better resolution compared to the uh, initial resolution. So that's the very basic concept of all these technique words. These sequential tech where you need to localize a small pool uh, of molecule one after the other. So of course, so uh, that's very basic. So in, in more practical aspects, so of course we can will not turn one molecule after the other one. It's not possible. We'll use the stochasticity where molecules will be able to turn fluorescent and non fluorescent in a stochastic manner. What you have to verify is that molecules are distant enough from the others so that you can individualize them. This is the, the very basic. You see that you you're stated by diffraction, but the fact that you have molecule in the, they are sparse enough so that you can have single molecule. What you will do then, that you'll uh, look at the uh, number of molecule, you lace them, you pull the construction, and then you repeat this process of activation, bleaching, uh, activation, deactivation, so maybe it's not uh, only bleaching events, and you will pull all localization so at the end, you will end with an edge with uh, much, much improved localization. So this small cartoon, which show you it works. So this is on the upright uh, resolution image. And then by activating molecule one after the other, you repeat this a uh, thousand of times. Then you do the localization, and you will be able to resolve time the story which is not uh, visible uh, using uh, re regular microscopy. So this is how things work in uh, in practice. Okay? So this technique is certainly one of the most popular of all the super-resolution techniques because it only requires a very basic microscope. So use any nice say, turf or uh, a uh, technique with, uh, where you can do like from turf to oblique illumination then you have a system which is compatible with uh, this location-based super-resolution microscopy. So that it doesn't require any fancy or very uh, complex uh, instrumentation. So you can make the good standard mi microscope. And you, uh, you use this either photoactivable proteins or use this, uh, this storm uh, or this storm um, uh, effect. And then you, are, will, you will be able to achieve super-resolution. So that's why this technique is certainly the most uh, popular uh, amongst the, all the super resolution techniques. And then thanks to uh, this concept, so this is an example of a neuron which is labeled uh, with actin binding protein attached with the TAM uh, EOS, which is a photoactable protein. And by doing this super resolution uh, sequence, you are capable to construct an image here. A resolution which is about 10 times better, depending on the flow of four that you are using. So, okay, the microscope just uh, can have this improvement of uh, uh, 10 times better. So, what's the trick? Of course, there is a price to pay because you know that in microscopy, you always have there is always a trade off. So, the price to pay is that for the number of images to go from the left lower uh, resolution image to this super resolution edge that you need to acquire a few 10,000 of images in order to be able to get enough molecule to reconstruct the image. And of course, because of this high number of images, even if you go with very high frame rates, then it will end with a few tens of minutes of acquisition time. Finally, the edge will up uh, uh, largely with the number of images, and then like a uh, one megabyte image will turn to 50 gig of, uh, of uh, data storage. And finally, and not the, the least, the, so it requires typically from the image is composed of more than a million of uh, molecules that you have to extract from uh, 50,000 images. It is that it's very, very uh, time consuming and uh, it, it was a lot of resource to uh, localize with a very good accuracy where your, uh, are your molecules. So one of the reasons why it is uh, time consuming, it means that each individual molecule you need to identify 
the RADs which is behind. So in general, we use uh, the, the most popular technique which provides the, the, the best resolution, the best pointing accuracy is based on Gaussian fitting. So typically, you have an image of a single molecule, which of course would be corrupted by noise. So you have the poison noise due to photons, and then you have some Gaussian noise due to the electronic. And you will have this blue profile and the idea to try to find the best uh, Gaussian profile, which will allow you to retrieve the, the coordinates of your molecules with best accuracy, possible accuracy, because the accuracy will give you uh, the, the resolution. So in two dimensions, okay, with image, then we'll end with trying to minimize the function with five parameters. So the background, the intensity of, of your molecule, the coordinates, x and y, and whether you know or not the, so the, the, the size of your uh, point spread function. So that's why for each individual molecule, you have a minimization algorithm, and it takes a lot of time. That's why it can go up to two hours of computation to localize uh, one to two million molecules. But it's very good uh, pointing accuracy. What we have achieved uh, this, uh, this last year is that we have uh, uh, developed uh, another family of algorithms, not based on Gaussian uh, fitting, but mostly based on uh, wavelet decomposition plus centroid um, measurements. So without going into too much detail, so the idea is to go on the left image, which is uh, basically a single molecule image corrupted by oil. So this is a, a, a real acquisition. And then we use wavelets in order to be able to decompose the signal in many different uh, frequency uh, bandwidth. You see, naturally, thanks to the properties of wavelets, so you keep the special information. So you end with these three or four, uh, series of image. So one which contains like 80 to 90 percent of the noise uh, of the image. Then the second image. So the, the, the sun wavelet map uh, contains the single molecule information. All the other information contain mostly like, like the background or uh, coarse details, which are nothing to do with, uh, with single molecule. So it's that once you have reached to get this level, then you just have to show your image and, and get the, the sun trade. And then with the uh, fast uh, decomposition uh, algorithms for, for, for the wavelet transform, and then we can end this image in only very few convolutions. Uh, and so that is so fast. So what we have done, of course, is that we have changed to, so once you develop a new technique, that we had to, to, uh, to check whether uh, it's performance, so accuracy and capability to resolve molecule in a more or less Death or noisy situations, so that we have prompt simulation, okay, and do the, the decomposition and see how we can retrieve information even on very low signal to noise, simulating that uh, with uh, our signal molecule with um, with low uh, number of photons. And what so the the, the good thing was that we are, we are capable to retrieve for all variety of conditions of density and signal to noise uh, ratio, a low localization accuracy with uh, precision very, very similar to Gaussian fitting. For the conditions, slightly slower, but uh, of a few percent. But the interest in addition was to, uh, okay, keep resolution, but have an, inc an increase uh, in uh, in a speed of factor, which was more like 20, 20 times faster compared to a regular Gaussian uh, fitting algorithms. But at the end, we were capable to run a tool which really uh, provides the capacity to get similar results from Gaussian fitting, but now with the same time, it's 10 times faster. So we jumped from a range of two hours to a few minutes. So the very first step uh, of uh, of, uh, of our uh, developments. Then this idea just came in, into the mind that, okay, just remember that this is from 50,000 images, a bit more than 1 million uh, molecules to, to localize, and then it takes like a few minutes. So now the next thing is that, remember, the acquisition is still in the range of a few minutes. So the idea was, okay, why not paralyzing this, this process? Because 
if you how the image are acquired, you always have time between one image uh, acquisition and uh, the time it is into the, um, the forever of your camera, so you can grab it and process it. That was what we, uh, that's what we have achieved after that is to do to apply this computation in parallel during the acquisition, and this is and with a software that we have called Wave Tracer, we have implemented directly uh, inside Metamorph in, uh, in collaboration with um, with uh, molecular device, which gives the capability to grab the data while they are streamed to the to to the computer. In streaming mode, you know, for example, going like 100 frames per second, which which is that you can achieve with the uh, with the fast MCCD, that you are capable. You have 10 milliseconds during the time your camera is into the memory before the next frame come, uh, and then so on. And I just have few milliseconds to take it, send it to the, the the processing, retrieve the coordinates, send the coordinate back to 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 be able to um, uh, to display the upper resolution image in live. And it, it provides some very, very interesting features. So the first thing is that, of course, for the user, it's very nice that you don't have to wait all of extra minutes after the acquisition to look at your uh, super resolution image so you get the super resolution in live. But another very interesting feature is to get the live statistics. So the statistic view of course, number of molecules, but also the density of molecules. And for the density of molecules, we can perform uh, automatic feedback uh, of this of this to the microscope, so that we are capable to tune the density of the lasers to just the density of molecule in a, in, a, in its optimal uh, state. Because you know that the as I've introduced before, you need to have uh, the the um, molecules which are sparse enough one from the other so that you can localize them. So if it's too dense, you will not be able to localize precisely, then it will lead to errors. But if you have too low uh, density, then if we, the, the acquisition time to, to, uh, to all the molecules will, will be much longer than uh, the ideal one. So the automatic feedback will allow you to put limits, and it's okay, if you go below or uh, above this threshold of intensity, so please adjust automatically the laser, so there is an activation laser, which allows you to adjust to give it more or less molecule. So this is an, so another very nice feature, of only because you are doing some live uh, reconstruction and live uh, statistics. So very nice thing. I don't know why it's there. Okay. So the big thing here is that we were able to uh, switch from uh, um, setting time, jump from trust to zero time as the for user uh, point of view. So of course, because now the, the, the processing time is done in parallel. And the other very nice uh, advantage is that now the storage, because you everything in real time, so you don't have to store all the original data, then you can switch from few ten of gigabyte down to a few uh, me megabytes, which is the size of a super resolution image. Still keeping all the localization uh, of each individual molecules. So you save time, but also you save space, you save space, you save bandwidth.